Okay, meanwhile, in the social in the social politics sphere, a fight has now broken out. A, I, I, I hesitate to, um, to characterize what kind of fight. Uh, it is between Dylan Mulvaney, who is a dude who believes he is a woman, and Caitlyn Jenner, who is a dude who believes he is a woman. And um, apparently, what led off this particular type of fight, and again, I will uh, avoid characterizing the fight with any sort of noun attached to the fight, is, uh, is that Caitlyn Jenner pointed out that Dylan Mulvaney had cut a video in which Dylan Mulvaney talks about how he is wearing short pleather shorts to the store and his bulge is, is visible to everyone. And he talks about not wanting to talk, which is a painful and ridiculous procedure whereby men pretend to be women by apparently using some sort of adhesive to glue their genitals underneath them or something. And I, I don't blame Dylan Mulvaney for not wanting to do that. It sounds wildly uncomfortable and terrible. Um, but instead, he says, I want to normalize people seeing a, a person cosplaying as a woman with their dick bulge hanging out. And Caitlyn Jenner was like, well, that's silly. <laughs> and this, of course, meant that, um, that Dylan Mulvaney was very, very horrified by all of this. And Dylan Mulvaney was very mad about all of this because, you know, when th this, is, this is a real bleep fight between, um, between two dudes. Here we go. Hi, Caitlyn. I'm Dylan. And we are two of the oh, no. most privileged trans women in America at the moment. And I mean, with men. that comes a lot men. of responsibility. And although we mm. have very different views on most things, a few days ago, I probably would have still been willing to sit down with you and try to connect with you in some way, because I automatically have a lot of respect for you as a fellow trans woman. But then mm -hmm. you decided to ridicule me very publicly. And honestly, this tweet didn't, phase me all that much. But then this one made me go, ah, not you calling me a he. That is just, Okay, pause oh. it there. So uh, what, what Caitlyn Jenner tweeted out was that Dylan Mulvaney was talking about his penis. And this apparently is very insulting. You must never notice that Dylan Mulvaney talking about his penis makes him a dude. Caitlyn Jenner's not allowed to notice that. And Dylan Mulvaney's very, very upset at Caitlyn Jenner about all of this. I mean, it is upsetting stuff. But then you didn't stop there. You said there is a difference between acceptance and tolerance and normalizing, exposing your genitals in a public way and a public place. I do not support that at all in the slightest. Dylan dot dot dot. Congrats, you're trans with a penis. Girl, you're making me sound like I'm some creepy flasher exposing myself. Yeah, yes. Yeah, that, that is what he's making it sound like because you are literally filming a video about your crotch bulge. So yeah, that would be, that would be, that would be the thing. I, I love that we're all supposed to pretend that we now live in a world of normalcy. This is all super normal, guys. Things are going amazing. Things are going just amazing in our culture. Oh my goodness. Uh, th this does raise uh, a, um, a fairly significant topic, actually. The significant topic is uh, David French, a person with whom I'm friendly. Uh, he, he tweeted out about a day ago, quote, if you go back to the late 90s and early 2000s, religious liberty was far more tenuous than it is now. After more than a decade of religious liberty victories, securing key goals of the religious liberty movement, do Christians feel more secure? Why not? I mean, the answer is pretty obvious. Okay, the legal victories in court are correctives to malaction in the public sphere. A legal victory in court happens after the government discriminates against you. Then you have to go to court and you have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars elevating that to the Supreme Court to get people to leave you alone. Is that a victory for Christians? So for example, if you are the baker over in Colorado and you're every, every week somebody comes in and says you're violating discrimination law by not baking a trans cake or baking a same-sex marriage cake or baking a Satanist cake and you get sued like every two minutes by the discrimination committee in Colorado and you have to take that to the Supreme Court every time, do you feel freer? Do you feel like your religious liberty has been protected more than it was 20 years ago when none of this was a question? It turns out that there is no substitute for preservation of tradition at the local level. And when you shift the nature of the rules and then carve out exceptions, of course you don't feel secure. Do I feel more secure as an Orthodox Jew today in America than I did 15 years ago? I do not. I feel more secure in Florida than I did in California. But in California, I was deeply afraid that the state of California was going to remove tax exempt status for my synagogue or for the school that I sent my kids to. And they were going to use anti-discrimination law in order to cram down on educational institutions like the ones my kids went to. LGBT policy. Why would I fear that? Because they're doing that in New York. They literally attacked 
Yeshiva University and sued them. They tried to fine them for not having the LGBTQ club at Yeshiva University, an Orthodox Jewish university. By the way, why you caved in dramatically horrifying fashion, sort of half caved, it was pathetic. Why you ended up sort of with the worst of all available worlds. Why you said, well, you know what we'll do? We'll have an LGBTQ support club. And that support club, you know, we won't say that the activity is totally okay with Jewish law because it isn't okay with Jewish law, but we'll have a support club where we're sympathetic. And all that happened is the LGBTQ club that wanted to form on campus, like, oh, you're bigots. And everybody on the, on the Orthodox Jewish side is like, what are you guys doing? It's one thing to say people are struggling with issues. It's another thing to glorify the identity as a separate identity, which runs directly counter to all religious thought. So shame on YU for doing that. But again, this goes back to the broader point. If you're wondering about discrimination against religion in American public life right now, we have 20 plus states in this country that say that if your child is gender confused and you bring them to a therapist and the therapist says you might be a member of the sex that you actually are a member of the sex of and you might want to wait it out, that this could amount to some form of conversion therapy. And then you wonder why religious people feel abused, why their religious liberty protections aren't sufficient. The answer is they aren't sufficient because the status quo ante was there was an expectation that parents would be able to raise their kids in peace with traditional ideas like boys and girls exist. And now that has been exploded. And the substitute has been a society that suggests that boys and girls don't exist. And maybe if you're religious, we'll let you carve it out because you're kind of a bigot, but you are religious. And you wonder why Christians feel bad. That's why Christians are not feeling safe these days. That would be the reason. All right, guys, the rest of the show is continuing now. You're not going to want to miss it. We're going to get into the Supreme Court, which held a hearing yesterday on ditching affirmative action, finally at long last. Plus, Israel is holding its election today, its latest election. They have one every seven minutes or so. If you're not a member, click the link in the description and join us. 